Okay, so today we are looking at the Radioddity DB25B, a pretty interesting DMR, highly portable radio. This radio is 20 watts output and runs from 136 megahertz through 147 megahertz, 400 megahertz through 400 and... 80 megahertz. So this is a two meter and 70 centimeter DMR and analog radio. It also has a built-in GPS receiver for doing GPS over DMR and features APRS functionality. After I spent some time with the radio, I realized that it really is only doing APRS beaconing right now. And so I needed to spend a little bit more time with it, but right now consider the APRS functionality just APRS beaconing at this point. Right up top, I wanna to say thank you to Radio Oddity for sending me this radio to take a look at. This radio comes with 4,000 channels, which means you can basically load 4,000 repeaters or of analog or DMR or simplex channels, whatever you want, so 4,000. And 300,000 DMR IDs off of the DMR database. For some detail on the DMR, this specifically does DMR tier one and tier two. Tier two is what you're primarily gonna use with amateur radio. In the box, you get the radio, a power connector, which is uh, already connected with the little cigarette lighter. I know we're not maybe calling it that anymore, but who cares? The cigarette lighter connector for a 12 volt car. And since this is putting out 20 watts of power, you're probably okay in almost all situations using this. In my case though, I run it truly portable with a Jackery power source. Uh, this is the one I use. There's plenty of uh, USB battery, AC pluggy things, but I like the Jackery. You get a fantastic speaker combination hand microphone. And this one has four programming buttons, which you can set in the CPS software. CPS software is DMR parlance for programming software. It's got that normal hooky thing that you can put a screw on, but best feature of this. So this actually has a magnet in the back. Here is a ferrite. Not bad, or I guess that's a toroid, depending on how you look at it. This is more than a strong enough magnet to hold it uh, up against something metal in your car, maybe one of those little adhesive discs that people now get for cell phones. It's strong enough that it will hold it, but not too strong that you feel like you're yanking it off the car uh, with some of these other magnet type connectors that I've seen. Now there is a programming cable that comes with it, but it is not your standard FTDI programming cable like this one, which is the Meerkit 6 to 1, which has the little pieces that you can pull off and plug in. I highly recommend you check out this programming cable. Uh, this is the one I use, link is in the description in Amazon. If you wanna check that out, that's my Amazon store. If you buy something there, it helps to support the channel. But with that said, the programming cable that comes with the kit is a non-FTDI chip, which means you'll have to use modified drivers. It's the same type of cable that you've probably seen that says Baofeng on a little black inlay with a circle or a silver bezel around the outside of it. Basically, if you have those, if you see one of those, you pretty much know this is not an FTDI chip. It will not be plug and play. There also is a tiny little GPS antenna that comes with this radio, which seems to work really well. I was able to acquire GPS actually inside my garage, which is pretty bad for most GPS receivers. So this should do fine outside. And again, this is a feature that allows you to do GPS functionality for DMR, but it also factors into using this for APRS. At the time of recording on the Radio Audio website, this radio runs about $235 to $240 around there. Uh, so for that, uh, basically you're getting 15 more watts than a handheld, the ability to use a much better antenna, and what I view as a pretty highly portable mobile radio, something that you may be able to use in a go box or in a car that you don't necessarily want to put a fixed antenna on and have a fixed radio solution, something that you can just pick up and take away when you're done driving anywhere you're going. Now I have the perfect platform to try this radio out in because it's super small, super portable, and I'd like to see it used uh, on little mobile contacts here. So uh, Ben, if you will, please bring the mobile platform and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you what I think about this and wrap up the review. Okay, here's the dashboard for my kid's power wheel. I'm thinking we can go right there with the radio. Got a couple pieces of double-sided tape here. Got to keep the smooth lines here, so we're going to try and hide the power plug in here.
for lack of a better way to do this, I'm thinking of using a mag mount like this to try it. <laughs> All right, so last but not least, we got a Tram 1811 mobile antenna. We'll go ahead and attach that. All right, here we go. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu looking for a radio check on 2 meter simplex. Anybody monitoring? Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. It doesn't like the RFI. <laughs> the RFI is a problem. Let's do this. And I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu on the Ham Radio Crash Course link. Anybody copy? Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. I'm hearing you now on this one just fine. Like I said, I, I see that you tried to keep a few times before, but I didn't ever hear anything. It was just garbled. All right, cool. Thanks for, uh, oop. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming back to me. Appreciate it. Yeah, just doing a test of this little, little tiny radio here and wanted to see if I hit the repeater. And I am, and it's Brandmeister enabled, so that's good. Thanks for the, the little check there. Appreciate it. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. All right, so what do I like? And don't like and would I recommend you buy it okay so what I like is it's got a good speaker mic it has a front firing speaker which is nice the speaker is on the quiet side but it's tiny so I'm not surprised by that $235 is not cheap in the DMR space DMR space but at the same time the this is a bump up from an HT because it's got 15 more watts from my home with my external antenna I was able to make contacts well over 20 miles away into repeaters that are fairly low altitude I'm not even going to the really high um, repeaters in my area and it did fine I got signal reports that said I sounded very good now the weak front speaker is kind of offset by the speaker mic which is also itself kind of weak but if you have two weak speakers you start to get there really close you know pretty closely and if you had something to put it on your chest or if it was also forward facing at you a little bit closer then that, that would solve a lot of your problems now something of a convenience this has a side door here for the programming cable which is a Kenwood style connector or what we affectionately call the bow fan connector and they make an external speaker that connects directly into it and you can run it that way which is another option that you can go the screen was uh, very bright. It's not a large screen. It's basically a handheld screen. Basically, you have more output capability. That's the big thing, and that's kind of why it needs to be uh, in this form factor. The body of this is pretty much all metal on the lower half. The only thing that's plastic is this front plastic that covers the front of the face of it. Um, the metal's actually really nice. All the mount points for the mobile bracket is metal, which is going to be nice for setting it up in a car. It feels very rigid. It's a little bit heavier than I would expect it to be, and that feels good in the hand. Uh, feels like it's quality. There is a clicky knob in the front for controlling which channel you're on, the volume, going through the menu and whatnot. And you know what I say, I like a good knob. <laughs> All you British people are laughing you're hysterically right now. Uh, this one's okay. It's really clicky, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter that much. Hey, Josh, if you hear me, hey, I 6 nac 86 rdj here. Uh, your audio sounds fantastic over, uh, over on the D-Star side of things. Uh, yeah, QSL, I'm using this uh, DB25 little mini baby DMR 20-watt radio, and... Yeah, so good report. I appreciate it. I'm coming in from a local repeater. I had uh, two problems with this radio that aren't really problems, uh, particularly if you're familiar with CPS software. And let me explain what that is specifically. CPS software, again, DMR parlance for a application you run on your computer that you use to program the radio. Out of the box, this radio has kind of a funky setup for the programmed keys. It has three programmable keys on the body of the radio and then another three on the speaker mic. And the default config for those buttons are not at all what I would use or would expect to use, particularly on an amateur radio. So basically out of the box, you're gonna to have to change that out. And second thing, and I didn't realize this until I was poking around a little bit more, this radio will auto lock itself. It'll auto key lock it. So you can't really click any of the programmable keys until you go into that aforementioned CPS software and change it. So you're pretty much guaranteed to have to dial dive into the CPS on this one, which is 
not that big of a deal. Uh, you're getting a DMR radio and, and I really need to be clear. For everyone watching this that you're thinking about getting a DMR for the first time, you're going to have to connect it to a computer. There are, there are some DMR radios that, that come to mind that you can front panel program, but even then it is very frustrating to do that. Uh, it's only less frustrating using the DMR software. With that said, the Radioddy DMR programming software is pretty good. The menus are all much like you'd expect. There's a table on the, lo the left side which has different icons that you can click on. All the menus make sense. Some of the fields, particularly when you get into the radio device fields, are a little foreign, but that's not that big a deal. How you set up contacts, how you create repeaters, are all grouped into zones, which you would expect for DMR. And then there are also receive groups that you can add, and those receive groups are going to be like your talk groups, basically. And, and they're grouped by receive group that you add the talk groups to. So it's a bit of break from the norm as far as other CPS software that I have used in the past, but it makes sense. All right, it's the time you've been waiting for. Would I recommend you buy this radio? If you are in the market for a DMR radio and you're looking for something that's gonna be a step up for a handheld or from a handheld, I would look at this option. There are other DMR mobiles on the in the market space and this isn't that much cheaper, but it's easy to program. It's easy to kind of set up wherever you'd want. You could use it as a home radio, a go box radio, a mobile radio, yeah, as you would expect. Uh, and it, it's, it's kind of nice to use. It's, it's very intuitive, kind of, <laughs> for a DMR radio. And for those of you that know DMR radios, you, you kind of know what I'm, what I'm saying here. The menu system is easy. You click on the menu button, you get icons. Those icons take you to more icons. And then that's where you get down to actual text that you would change your zones or change your contact you're on or what your receive group is or talk group that you're listening on at the time. That's all very straightforward as far as the menu system is concerned and how you kind of move around some. So by and large, it's a, it's a pretty good radio for someone that wants to get into the DMR space. And just to throw this out, if, if you live in an area where you're gonna be working DMR repeaters or you're thinking about doing DMR simplex, this is gonna be much more important to think about something that has more power output. If you are just going to stick to an HT and use a handy talkie, well, this loses some of its novelty for having the 20 watt output and the ability to connect to a much better antenna just natively with the SO259 in the back. But you also get the GPS receiver and the other features that come along with it. So it, it will fit into a more specialized niche of a ham radio operator, but that might be you. And at the price point, and particularly if you're a, a, a avid DMR user, then it probably makes sense. Okay, so that wraps up the video. Tell me what you think of the Radioddy DB25D. I'm curious what your thoughts are, or if you have one, tell me what you think of it. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this or found this helpful, please click the thumbs up button and click subscribe. That really does tell YouTube that you like what I'm putting out there, and I put out videos at least once a month, a standalone, shorter form like this, and then I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Ham Nation every other Wednesday. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I hope you enjoyed watching the Ham Radio Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. Why does this keep coming on? The air conditioner keeps coming on.